Alrighty guys, so first off here, look at the income statement, oh baby, oh baby. That's what we call an A plus, okay? An A plus, A plus income statement here. Revenue, 26 billion plus. They did a little over 7 billion in the same quarter last year. Cost of revenue, it didn't, I mean, you know, it went up roughly double, a little over double year over year. But here's the thing, did their revenue go up more than double? Yes, it went up like... <laughs> nearly quadrupled year over year. So when your cost of revenue only a little over doubled and your revenue nearly trip, like nearly quadrupled, oh my gosh, that means your gross profit went insane. That's exactly what happened. Over $20 billion of gross profit on this company versus $4.6 billion gross profit in the same quarter last year. If we look at operating expenses, R&D, they upped that quite considerably year over year. They're spending nearly, you know, we can call it about $900 million a year more per quarter in R&D, which makes sense. I mean, this company's innovating at a faster scale than just about anybody out there. So it makes sense to spend on R&D, right? Selling general administrative expenses, they didn't even up that that much. I mean, 633 mil to 777 mil. And I mean, guys, this is like crazy. Anybody that knows anything about business this is ridiculous. So their selling general administrative expenses was up about $144 million year over year. But their revenue, their revenue was up like $19 billion year over year. You gotta be flipping my flapjacks. This is the most insane, I've never seen, I've never seen a, I've never seen in my 15 plus years of being in the stock market, I've never seen SGNA only go up for a company a little over $100 million, while meanwhile, the revenue went up like $19 billion year over year. That's, I can't even, I can't even fathom that. That's just ridiculous. Absolutely, absurdly great. Like, you, like this is a one-off situation. You'll never, you'll likely never see something like this ever again from any public company ever. I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. This is a one-off freak situation. I do not think you will ever see another company come out and have their revenue up $19 billion roughly year over year while their uh, SG&A went up $100 million. Uh, that's just, it's, you can't even fathom that. Operating income for this company, nearly $17 billion versus $2.1 billion in the same quarter last year. Interest income up to $359 million versus $150 mil in the same quarter last year. Interest expense down very, very slightly. Other income was up very slightly, so other income about $370 million in the plus. Income before income taxes, $17.2 billion versus two point two in the same quarter last year. Net income, a little under $15 billion versus $2 billion in the same quarter last year. Diluted EPS, $5.98 versus $0.82 cents in the same quarter last year. you got to be flipping my flapjacks. But that's just a start. Look at the balance sheet. Oh, my gosh. This is just on a, a sequential basis. This is just quarter over quarter improvement in the balance sheet. Look at this. They went from about $26 billion of cash, cash equivalents, marketable securities, to $31.4 billion. That's just on a quarter over quarter basis. Look at total assets. They went from $65 billion, so you can call it about $66 billion of total assets, to over $77 billion of total assets, just on a quarter over quarter basis. What? What? If you look here, okay, if you look at total assets versus total liabilities, otherwise known as stockholder equity, right? They went from about $43 billion in a plus to $50 billion in a plus, just on a quarter of a quarter basis. Incredible. Incredible. Okay. Now, if you look at the numbers versus what analysts were expecting, they did 612 versus 559, okay? They also did $26 billion of revenue versus 24.6. Now, it's very important, everybody watching this understands what I'm about to explain, okay? This is very important. So, for a big popular stock like an NVIDIA, basically, they also have a whisper number, okay? Now, this whisper number is what you really need to beat in order for your stock price to go up even more, Okay? If you can come in and even beat the whisper number, then you're really, really talking. So although analysts for NVIDIA, for instance, were at about $24.5 billion for revenue, NVIDIA couldn't come in with 24.5. They couldn't even come in with 20, 25, or they couldn't even come in with 25.5. And the reason they couldn't is because the whisper number was exactly at $26 billion. So they really needed to come in and beat that $26 billion number. 
And sure enough, they came in and slightly beat that. So that put even more positive momentum behind the stock because not only did they crush analyst expectations on average, but they also beat the whisper number. They even beat most folks that were super, super bullish on the stock. They even beat those folks' numbers, okay? So that matters significantly. When I talk to you guys about the game of Wall Street and these stock price moves and these earnings, you got to understand all this. It's a complicated subject, but I'm trying to break it down as simple as possible. I hope stuff like that helps you guys out so you just understand the games that are being played behind the scenes, okay? Now, next up here, revenue guidance. They guided for $28 billion of revenue. Incredible number. Analysts were at about 26 to 27 billion from what I saw across the board. Like basically every analyst I saw, like the 26 or 27 billion was where they were at for the revenue guide for next quarter. So the fact that they're talking about 28 billion is a great sign. You know why else it's a great sign? Because NVIDIA comes in and beats their numbers every single quarter, basically, right? Quarter in, quarter out, they come in, they beat their EPS expectations, their revenue expectations. So if they guide for 28, they're probably going to do 28.5, 29, something like that, right? Maybe even 29.5 billion, right? So significantly ahead of where analysts are at. So that's more great news in regards to NVIDIA. Also, they announced this 10 for 1 stock split. Does this do anything for the fundamentals of the company? Absolutely not. Could this be something that helps NVIDIA stock price out? It could actually help out NVIDIA stock price considerably. It's a psychological game some people play. It's also retail investors. It's easier for retail investors to buy at $100 versus $1,000, right? So there's all these little games that are being played. 10 for 1 stock split doesn't change anything in the fundamentals of the company, but it does. It can help out the stock price. There's no doubt about that, right? So basically... Each holder as uh, on record, as of the close of the market on Thursday, June 6, they're going to receive nine additional shares of common stock to be distributed after the close of the market on Friday, June 7, 2024. Trading is expected to commence on a split-adjusted basis at market open on a Monday, June 10. Okay, so that's important numbers. No, by the way, they did also up their dividend 150%. It is such a minuscule amount, it's barely even worth mentioning, though. Their, their dividend's honestly a joke. But the one thing I will say, you're starting to look at NVIDIA's net income they're starting to bring in, and this dividend payout could actually start to become very substantial over the next 5, 10 years. Is it substantial now? No. But if you look out 5 years from now, 7 years from now, 10 years from now, the dividend payouts could be pretty substantial in regards to NVIDIA. So just a little food for thought in regards to that, right? So basically, I have 33 shares of NVIDIA stock in the public account. I have uh, other shares in other portfolios as well. So my 33 shares it, you know, is basically going to go to 330 shares. But NVIDIA stock's likely going to be a 1000 something dollars at the time. So then the share price is going to move to 100 something dollars. So it ends up equaling out. It's not like there's some arbitrage to be made here. That's not how this works. But um, that's basically just so you guys understand what's going to happen here. NVIDIA stock price is going to go to 100 something dollars and people that are shareholders like myself are going to get 10 times uh, or you basically have about 10 times the amount of shares here. Okay. Now, Jensen absolutely slaughtered the bear case in regards to stock and analysts asked them every single bearish point you could ever imagine. Here's the deal. Okay. And we'll even go over a new bearish point that is a new thing they're trying to talk about in regards to NVIDIA. So, he got asked about, what about companies double and tripling ordering uh, these chips, right? He got asked, what if uh, customers stop ordering the current chips because your chips are getting better every year, so they're just going to stop ordering this year's chips so they can get next year's chips, or maybe not order next year's chip because they can get the better chips the following year. The third big bear case is... You know, the, the folks have thought there's going to be no big Blackwell revenue this year uh, specifically. Or if there is any Blackwell revenue, it's going to be very minuscule. That's going to be more of a next year story. And then com competition, right? Competition was another thing that was brought up. Okay, so double, triple ordering. He got asked that question. So there's basically this thought process from Bears in regards to NVIDIA that all these companies are ordering a bunch of extra chips and they're hiding them under the, the filing cabinet or something like that. And they're putting them under the desk and they're not really using them. They're just buying them to buy them. And he, basically, Jensen just kind of killed that down. He said, everything that's getting put out into the market, these companies are using right away, right? For instance, Tesla, They've, they have about 35,000 H100 so far. Elon Musk says he wants to get to 85,000 at least H100s by the end of this year. Tesla's using all those chips. They're not just like, oh, let's 
put them over here in the corner and we'll just stack them up. Maybe we could resell them in the future for more money or maybe we can just, I don't know, uh, see them collect dust. No, 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 no. You're not going to just order chips to order chips. You're going to order chips because you need those chips to run these programs, right? To advance your AI ambitions and to advance your company. That will hopefully bring in a lot more customers, revenue, profits, okay? So he killed that down. Like that, that's just a ridiculous thought process that these guys are just going to order chips to order chips. It's not the way this game works, okay? Believe me, these companies aren't doing NVIDIA any favors. They're not like, oh, let me just order extra billions of dollars of these chips just to order them now, okay? And also remember, all these chips get better each year. So if anything, you're not incentivized to order more chips. It's not like NVIDIA saying, we're gonna make a thousand of these chips and that's all we're ever gonna make and we're never gonna make these chips better. No, you're, you're the opposite of incentivized to order chips you don't need. You're only gonna order what you need. So the whole double, triple ordering is, is baloney. It's a bear case that's been talked about that's baloney. He killed that off. Second thing is, Customers, what if they stop ordering H100s because next year chips are even better? And what if they don't order these Blackwell chips because uh, the following year's chips are going to be even better, right? So that was an analyst asked that question. There's another bear point that's made out there. Okay, I explain it like this. It's an arms race between these companies, right? And Jensen described it as a race. I describe it as an arms race. I don't think he wants to put it as nice as, as, uh, or as maybe violent as that, but it's an arms race between these companies. You can't, and Jensen explained this on the call as well, and this is something I've been explaining in videos for probably months now, you can't stop like ordering these chips because if, let's say you're Meta, okay? My biggest investment in the public account. Let's say Meta's like, you know what? We're spending too much on these chips. And you know what? They're gonna come out with even better chips next year. So let's not order any chips next, this year, okay? Meta could do that. Zuckerberg could do that and be like, we're gonna save billions of dollars. But now you just put yourself behind your competitors. Your competitors now are gonna potentially win the game of the next decade, you know, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, these huge, massive opportunities. You can't just choose to be like, you know what, I'm not going to buy the most advanced chips. I'm just going to stick with what I got right now. Do that and lose. Do that and lose. You can't do that because every year the chips get better and better and better and significantly better. I mean, we're talking about some of these improvements are 50% you know, improvements, 100% improvements, sometimes even hundreds of percent improvements on one chip one year versus the next chip the next year. So you can't just say, you know what, I'm not gonna buy these GPUs, I'm not gonna buy these new AI chips. No, 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 this is not how this works, okay? And Jensen explained that on the call and that's something I've been explaining for months. I mean, these analysts should probably just watch my videos instead of doing whatever the heck they do because they're clueless. And they, they talk about these points. I'm like, dude, this is like, you like they, the, 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 it's proof to me that they don't understand the business model. They don't understand the business model and they don't understand Amazon, they don't understand Meta, they don't understand Tesla, they don't understand Google, I'm like, they don't understand ChatGPT, they don't understand Microsoft, I'm like, holy smokes, man, it's insane. Third thing is, right, uh, there's been a thought process about no big Blackwell, their new, their new chip that's going to cost roughly $40,000 each, right, there's a thought process that no big uh, revenue this year, Jensen, Jensen said there's going to be a lot of revenue from Blackwell, that was his quote, a lot, a revenue from Blackwell. It sounds like they're already ready to sell this thing heavily in the back half of this year. Heavily. Not a small amount, a lot. A lot, okay? So could we see a $30 billion plus revenue quarter this year, as in this calendar year? Because now they're on to their next fiscal year. But could we see a $30 billion plus dollar quarter in this calendar year? The answer is likely. The answer is likely after hearing his Blackwell comment there, okay? Fourth thing, competition. <sighs> competition, oh my gosh, competition. Are they going to catch up? These sorts of things, right? Um, you know, AMD, these other players. Okay, it, Jensen went through the whole thesis around how NVIDIA is really the only company in the world that has everything in place to make your chips as successful as possible. From the infrastructure, from the software side to the hardware side, to be able to uh, uh, you know change models, they have the whole ecosystem in a way that no one else does. AMD is a very successful company, but they are not Nvidia, and they cannot compete with Nvidia in this space in any substantial way. And if you ask Lisa Sue, I mean, you know, if she 
you know, obviously she can't say that in an interview. That sounds really bad. So she would never say that. But if you could, you know, put some truth serum in her and, and listen, she would tell you that. Intel. Stop it. If you think Intel is going to beat NVIDIA, stop it. I don't even know. I, like, 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 it's just ridiculous. It's like sometimes it's like not even worth my breath. Not even worth my breath, okay? All eyes on NVIDIA. We're going to get into that one, react to that one. Most important thing going on today. Um, all right, Joe. Wolf on NVIDIA. Big day for the market, Rarely has there been Big a day. single stock with such importance. As long as it tops expectations, they say, NVIDIA is likely to remain a key tailwind for the overall U.S. stock market. Big day. Do we going to live up to the hype? Do, do we really think that one quarterly report, even if they miss is going to motivate investors to remove this company as a core holding in a portfolio? No, no one's this saying this is an no, anchor. No, no, no this no, is no. the anchor. No one's going to say oh, they're going to miss. You're going to sell it. That, that you just, I don't buy that Good. one bit. Absolutely. I do think though that if they miss, the stock could go down a lot, and the Nasdaq could could go down. A, 2%. So they get the benefit of the doubt if it goes down. And yes, the stock market will go down if there's a miss. The bear argument is simple. Forget that they have to beat. They have to beat by yeah. how much? They have that to beat true. by an exorbitant amount. That is true. Fundamentally, the bear argument is the Blackwell chip is coming out later in the year, mm -hmm. and you've got customers that are going to hold back on spending yep. in anticipation That's of the bear Blackwell. argument. The problem with all of that is twofold. And the reason why I actually think tonight I wouldn't be surprised to see this stock up 5 to 10 percent. From a, a perspective of positioning, April 19th, the stock goes down 10 percent. On what? The expectation that chip demand is weakening. What happens subsequent to that? All of the big technology, <clears throat> excuse me, big, te uh, big technology companies report. They all report and they tell you what? We're going to be spending money. Meta, yep. Alphabet, Amazon, all coming out. They say we're spending a ton of money. Yep. Stock rallies. During that period, what do we hear from the speculative and hedge fund community? They're cutting back positions in <laughs> NVIDIA and other big mega cap companies. And the option market is telling you right now it's skewed towards the put side. I actually think positioning is set up the right way where this stock Ooh. continues to move higher and it goes above a thousand tonight. Jay, well, okay. Jason Snipe, we're talking about the tonight. options market implying Ooh. a plus or minus 8% move, mm -hmm. plus or minus $186 billion worth of market cap. Yep. NVIDIA represents 5.3% of the S&P 500 and 6.5% of the NASDAQ 100, just in case you're scoring at home, as to why this stock holds so much importance tonight. Here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say here, okay? Anybody that after those earnings comes out is selling or buying that stock, is um it's pretty clownish just to be quite frank we know nvidia is such a great company you don't mess around you don't trade that stock you buy it you own it for the long term and you that's that you, it's a very very simple story you know there's other stocks you, if you want to trade crap companies around you know they go up and go down okay nvidia like i guarantee you every single trader that has made any money on nvidia or lost money on nvidia stock the past 20 years would have been way better off just buying and holding the thing just buy and hold the thing. And if you see any major dips, dollar cost average, call it a day. Simple. 100% Scott. And guess what? Last quarter, options market implied a 13% move either way. So I think the volatility has come down a little bit. I think what's important to me is something that Joe alluded to in terms of the performance and the price action. Um, you know, the revenue guy was $24 billion for this quarter. I think the whisper number is around 26 You know, so, um, you know, if, if they hit that or even come close to that, I think it's a, it's a blowout, obviously, and I, and I think that's likely to happen. Um, you know, the other thing is I think about the AI race and folks holding back on the Blackwell chip that's going to be produced later on this, this year. You know, when I think about the AI race, I, I don't think there'll be hold back on spending. I think folks will get into the H100s, even though it's not the most sophisticated chip, the, the more sophisticated one is obviously coming out um, later on this year. But I, I don't think that holds back anything. And I think that um, we'll see an explosive core this year. So I mean, this core, this at the end of this evening. Jimmy, uh, earnings year over yeah, year. Yeah, the issue is if you hold back, and let's just think about this practically as a business, okay? Let's, let's take away from the stock price. Let's think about this as a business. Okay, so let's say you're meta. And you're like, you know what? We're not going to buy any more H100s. We only want the Blackwell chips. Okay. So one, you got to wait. So now there's like this time period in there, 
right? Where you're not gonna have extra H100s, which means they can't be working for you. Also, whenever you do start to get some Blackwell chips, it's gonna be some Blackwell chips. It's not gonna be as many as you need. And we know every single one of these companies needs as many of these chips as possible, as soon as possible. They're in a war right now with each other to win these games that are the next 10, 20 year games, right? And so every single one of them, what does Elon Musk say on the latest conference call? Was Elon Musk talking about, oh, no, we're going to wait till a Blackwell chip and hopefully Jensen sends us like 20 of those. And no, he's talking about they got 35,000 H100s. They hope to get to 85,000 H100s by the end of the year. So these people that run these little uh, like uh, bearish thought arguments, right? They, they should think about these things a little bit more through. I, I, sometimes I don't think any of these people have ever actually run a business. If they had run a business... I think they would understand maybe on a little deeper level about the fundamentals of these companies. Expected to be up 410%. Revenue expected to be up 241%. Wait, wait. What, what, what? At the end of this evening, Jimmy, uh, earnings year over year expected to be up 410%. Revenue expected to be up 241%. Cheers. Just gives you an idea of why the stock is where it is. It certainly does. I mean, it's pretty incredible. And I think I mentioned this to you yesterday, Scott, but the earnings estimates for this quarter are 230% higher than they were one year ago. Uh, they're 20% higher than at the beginning of the year. Now, I think they will beat the earnings estimates. I think they will raise guidance. And my comment rhetorically asked is, does anyone disagree with that? I mean, in the world, does, I, I'm, I'm struggling to find a single person who's saying, no, they're <laughs> going to miss. Joe, I heard your comments wonderfully made about what hedge funds have done and what put sellers have done. And I think, or put buyers rather, I think what they're saying is probably what I'm saying, which is that everybody expects a beat in a race. I mean, this would have to be one one heck of a, of a quarter to beat lofty expectations. And I think there are some people, me included, who are saying it's probably all priced in. Now, I'm a holder of the shares. I have about a 2% position. I expect that in the fullness of time through the end of this year, I'll probably double that. But I'm not buying it here today. That's, that's my comment. All right. It's interesting because when people say it's already priced in, it's not already priced up. <laughs> okay. And, and the overwhelming well, I mean, majority of market. people, logic, <laughs> logically, when you look at NVIDIA, you say to yourself, yeah, it's priced in already. But I don't know, this company, you cannot bet against it from the perspective of holding a position. I'm, I'm not betting against it. I do hold a position. I hear you. You're absolutely right that that has been the history for several quarters. You think You'll if agree, they... At some point, that won't be the case. You at think if they... That's fair. You think if they hit the ball out of the park from a guidance standpoint that it's already priced in? I, I don't think in. that's controversial. Yes, that is what I'm saying. I don't think it's controversial. It might be wrong. I mean, I'm not sitting here saying, by no means am I saying sell the stock, for goodness sakes. No, if it goes down, I'll buy more. No, no, I don't understand why you guys keep going with the sell the stock thing. And no one's suggesting if they miss, you're going to sell the stock. Right. But that doesn't mean the stock not going to go down why, why does it have to be like either they they beat oh you're you stay in the stock they miss you sell the stock no no well, one's suggesting that fine. okay no I, I, thinking I, about sell in all due respect sir that's how a stock price goes down selling pressure too many people selling not enough buying in all due respect sir stock <laughs> I, I may have been misreading what you were saying what you were asking but my my point is i'm underweight this stock to where i want to be to where i think i will be I'm not buying it right here at $947 a share. That implies that I think I will get a lower price at which to buy it. Uh, I'm not talking about selling it. I mean, I, that's, not, that's not in the cards. But what I am saying, and again, could very well be wrong, is that the expectations for this stock are incredibly lofty. Well, which is why we asked Christina Parts. We're playing a big game of musical chairs in regards to NVIDIA. That, that's a problem with NVIDIA. That's the problem with NVIDIA because they're going through such an insane demand cycle. Demand just ran you through these revenue numbers and earnings per share numbers and expectations, right? And this is important to understand, not just for NVIDIA, but anytime you're in any of these somewhat cyclical type stocks, which NVIDIA is somewhat of a cyclical type stock, right? Listen, it's a big game of musical chairs. Everybody's playing here. So everybody's trying to figure out where's the top roughly for revenue for this company. And at that time, they're going to try to jump out of this thing. Now, people have been thinking like, oh, maybe we're around the top, so they jump out, and that's why you see the stock move down 10, 20% quickly. And then they're like, oh, no, it wasn't the top, and so they get back in, and the stock rockets higher. So that you're going to continue to play this game of musical chairs until NVIDIA, it's clear that NVIDIA's business model has topped in the short term. 
Doesn't mean it's top for the next lifetime, the next 10 years, 20 years, just top for the next couple years. And they're not going to really be able to grow revenue more. No one's been able to get to that level yet in regards to NVIDIA of like really feeling super confident about the business's top. Once there is, and if that happens in this quarter, people will jump out of this, sh this, this ship like a bunch of rats on a ship that's sinking, okay? That's what will happen. But we folks have to be confident when they go to, you know, make that move. Hey, this is it. This is it. Like, like you know, the business model is about topping now at this point in time. Maybe they put revenue to $28 billion or something a quarter, and then that's about the top, right? Now, if people get confident about now, they're still going to grow to 30, 32, 34 billion, 36 billion. Then people are going to continue to pile in this one. It's a game of musical chairs right now.